In today's video, I'm checking out a mod that transforms the current F1 game. We're booting up F124, unfortunately, but this mod is going to time warp the entire look of the grid back to 2012. <laughs> Aura, man. Aura. That intro had aura. That's obviously a massive amount of nostalgia as well, because that was the F1 intro that I grew up with watching the sport. So I'm obviously going to love it. But uh, it, it did have a different... <laughs> it had a different feel to it. And this has a totally different feel to it. Oh my days, this is taking me right back. It's the F1 2012 cover. You know, I'm sure there's gonna be some newer viewers watching this video, newer F1 fans watching this video, younger F1 fans watching this video. But for those of you like me that have been watching this sport for over 12 years, maybe even more than that, but for me, I grew up with this era of Formula One through my teenage years. This is about to hit different. Even more so, actually, because I even forgot, F1 2012 was pretty much the first proper full F1 game I started making content on. So this mod being made, it's just meant to be. It's it's meant to be. I wonder if any of the other bits of the menu are going to be different, because I know the splash screen is uh, easy to swap out. Oh, oh, man, straight away. Even the old race suits. Oh, it's taking me back. It's taking me back. All we're missing now is F1 2012's menu music. You know what? I'm going to do just that. I'm going to edit in the F1 2012 menu music. There we go. There we go. Now, now this is hitting proper. This is scratching an itch in the back of my head. Oh, the old race suits, the Red Bull, the Merc on the right, the Ferrari one. Iconic, iconic look for Ferrari. I loved the suits. I love the liveries of this era of Formula 1. In contrast, it's an absolute travesty. I have to click F1 World now to get into Grand Prix mode, you know? But bring back just Grand Prix in the menu. I've just deep that. I just sound like a complaining old man now. I mean, I, I'm just in full old man mode. Nostalgia maxed out. Things were better in my day. <laughs> Before we carry on with this amazing nostalgia trip, if you want to check out this mod, by the way, there'll be a link down below in the description where you can go download it on overtake.gg. But let's look through all the driver overalls. Oh, man. Oh, it's just sick to see these back. It's just, like I said, it just it activates something in my brain. Got to say, Verstappen and Perez do rock this uh, old school look for the Red Bull. I miss when they had this much like color going on in their overalls. Mercedes, proper basic stuff here. Proper basic stuff. And you know what I've just noticed? Look at the helmets. I think very nicely they've modded the helmet of Hamilton to make it more yellow to kind of match what, uh, funny enough, what Rosberg, his arch, his friend turned arch enemy, uh, match Rosberg's colour. And then they've matched Russell's colour to what Schumacher's helmet used to be like. So when we go into the race, there will be a very nice kind of throwback vibe to Rosberg and Schumacher in this car. Ferrari, oh yeah, bellissimo, bellissimo. This, this overall, hitting absolutely hitting even Leclerc and Sainz pull it off you know you don't even need Fernando Alonso back in the in this suit these guys pull it off it, it's just a great look yeah the Santander in the middle the hits of white that just work well with the red but you know what this might be even more iconic the Vodafone McLaren overalls and it looks right at home again these guys you know 12 years on from when these overalls were a thing in in their teams if it fits right in, why don't we just... You know what? MotoGP, I think earlier this year, wasn't it? They did a, a retro round. I think it was at Silverstone where they asked each team to come with retro liveries and retro overalls, you know, from whatever era they wanted to. Um, there's like a fun little thing to do. I actually think this is now jogging my brain. If coupled with that success in MotoGP and this as an example, like F1 should be definitely consider doing a retro round. Mate, it looks good. It looks good. You cannot deny me that Vodafone McLaren Mercedes would bang still in the modern era. <laughs> this is weird though. This is weird because Fernando, one of the few drivers that was obviously here on the grid in 2012, you know, we just spoke about him not being in the Ferrari overalls. This is weird seeing him in the Force India colors, but this is the transformation the team made. Obviously, Force India to then Racing Point to then Aston Martin. 
um, and, and many different liveries in between. Uh, they've had quite a journey, quite a journey. But this looks odd. This actually, I need to click off this. This look. Oh god! All oh, the lotus, the lotus overalls, the black and golds, and the proper black and gold. Not that rich energy crap. Actually works really well. Still suits. Pierre and Esteban actually quite nicely. Actually matches Esteban's helmet very well. Williams, oh, this just takes me back to, uh, this makes me just think of Paso Maldonado and the win at Spain because uh, this was the year where Maldonado got his one win in Formula 1. This overall just looks like a sponsor board. It's just, it's just, they've just put patched them on. <laughs> now this, this is a proper F1 team. Not this Visa Cash App crap. Scuderia Toro Rosso when the team actually had some aura about them. And quite nicely or not so nice depending how you want to look at it. Daniel Ricciardo used to be in a Toro Rosso, obviously, at one point in his career. And now, come full circle, obviously, in V-Cub, but we put him back in the Toro Rosso overalls. That's mad, actually, because obviously this in this year, Hamilton was in the McLaren. Alonso was in the Ferrari. So those two drivers that were on the grid 12 years ago aren't in their matching overalls. But this combination does match exactly what was here 12 years ago. Ricardo in the Toro Rosso. Sauber F1, very basic white and grey with a line of red. In many ways, a lot more pleasing on the eye than the in-your-face green right now of Kick Sauber. And then, of course, we come to Marussia. Back in 2012, there were more than 10 teams on the grid, but Haas were not a team in Formula 1. So there's a bit of a mismatch there. So the creator of this mod has chosen to replace Haas with Marussia. And this is quite cool for me to look back on and let me know in the comments below if you're truly an old OG still maybe watching some videos now and again uh, ever since 2012 because on F1 2012 originally this was my first ever kind of breakout series that I guess at the time people knew me for was F1 Road to Glory, a very short and snappy little comedy sort of F1 career mode series I did in the Marussia car. So this is really giving me back some memories. And of course, the overalls aren't just the only thing that have changed with this mod. The cars have changed too. Look at him. Look at him. Oh man, this is peak nostalgia here. Oh, the cr now this is real chrome. The Vodafone McLaren Mercedes looking lovely on the modern chassis, I must say. Some of these liveries, I can already tell maybe will look a bit odd on the modern era of Formula One car shape, you know, because when you make liveries, you're making them for the shape of that era. So some liveries don't translate very well, but I think you'll agree the Chrome Vodafone McLaren one does. Maybe apart from the side pods because of the shape, it was shaped specifically to the side pods of that year's car, that era of cars, basically. So maybe the side pod area is maybe the only thing that doesn't exactly match. And maybe the nose cone as well. You get a little bit less of the red lines on the bottom of the nose along the chassis. But apart from that, it still looks lovely. And then we get to the Red Bull. I mean, color. Wow. Actual color on the Red Bull. Not just like a disgustingly dull, very dark blue which pretty much can be black with carbon fiber in some places. I always like the speed lines on the older red balls. The red, the lighter blue, and the silver speed lines on the top of the side pods, the side of the chassis, it just worked. And then actual Red Bull stickering on the side pods. And just all together, a, a lot more of a fun, colorful Red Bull livery and car, I think. And again, I think this one actually works really well on the modern chassis. Ferrari, I mean, uh, a red car always works, you know? I think a red car in any era looks good, to be honest. But this one does look good. Apart from, I will say, what doesn't translate maybe as well is the sponsor placement on the side pods here. And I've always maintained the white with the red on the Ferrari really works. Like, I, I think they need to bring a bit more white back to the Ferrari car because the wing and the rear wing being white, it just, it just, for me, it just suits. And also, obviously, Santander being a sponsor... Uh, at the time in red just worked really well. It's like a, it was like a match made in heaven. Oh, and then here we come. Here we come. The team with actual aura about them, not some like corporate Visa cash app mess. Toro Rosso, man. Bring them back. Bring them 
back, okay? It Look how good that looks. That looks infinitely better than what we've got right now. The fact this team, mainly based out of Italy, you know, were called Scuderia Toro Rosso, which is just Red Bull. In Italian, they had this Red Bull that was more artistic in nature. It just fit, you know? It had like an Italian flavor of, uh, of artsiness to it. The front as well, I actually forgot they had this design on the top of the chassis towards the nose cone here. And the gold tips, whereas Red Bull, very nicely in front, used to be yellow. The Toro Rosso had gold tips where the yellow would be it, it just added to it. it just added to you know making it different enough but similar as well in ways where you could distinguish the two again it works quite well. i think the engine cover still works really well on the on the modern era the only thing for me personally is i think the shorter red bull nose design the, that's going on here it doesn't work as well. It looks like it's kind of basically been shrunk down. I do notice so far, by the way, I'm just saying everything looks lovely. Just it just let me have this nostalgia trip, okay? Let me and all the older people watching this video let us have this moment. Sahara Force India, you know what? Doesn't look as bad as I thought it would on the modern chassis. I think it definitely looked like tons better on the old school F1 cars, especially on the nose. The Force India had a really nice sculpted step nose, which I think just worked a lot better with this livery, but it still doesn't look half bad, you know. Looks very odd to have Fernando Alonso in it, though, I must say. And then this, this is just a classic. And you, do, do you see why uh, I was getting at with the whole Russell having a Schumacher colored helmet? And then you can see Hamilton there has the yellow one. From afar, you're getting that Rosberg Schumacher vibe. Absolutely. <laughs> but this is a very simplistic bare bone silver arrow design. For me, the side pod just looks a little bit, uh, a bit questionable now looking back at it. I think they could get away with it in 2012, but now the design work in F1 and in general and sports and everything's a lot more finessed, so it looks a bit plain. It looks a bit out of place. Looks kind of like someone's just got MS paint on it, but that's what they had in 2012. The Patronus on the front wing and rear wing works, though. That really works, and also the, just obviously the, the rest of the car, just in simple silver. Yeah, it's a silver arrow nothing more to it oh look at this picture all these different cars the marouche you know what the marouche slaps on the 2024 chassis the marouche looks right at home i'm sorry what um that actually might be the best looking car out of everything we've seen i'm not even kidding let me know if you agree with me i actually think the marouche car Looks the best out of the lot so far. Damn, that works well. Oh, man. Do we need to run back an F1 Road to Glory with this mod? <laughs> you know what else works? The Sauber. The Sauber livery works really... I think it's the... I think... You know what? I think it's the line work. It's the diagonal line work of the Marussia and the Sauber on the back end here. And then the just kind of very simple two-tone white to grey. And it, it You know... At, it may have been simple, but the Sauber colors at the time worked. You know, base white, bit of gray in there, accents of red. Yeah, the Williams, not too bad. Very plain in a way. And definitely the back end where these white lines, it doesn't work as well as it did on the 2012 chassis, like with the modern shapes where it dips down and has that Coke bowl. And then finally, ooh, the Lotus, gold and black. Yeah, it works somewhat. I think the front end of these Lotus cars were definitely better in 2012. But this side actually surprisingly really works well, even with the modern shape. Oh man, what a nostalgia trip, huh? What a nostalgia trip. All these retro liveries together again, but in a weird time warp way with the modern cars. It actually works really, really well. And this mod doesn't only just look great, it sounds great too. Yep, yeah, that's right. It's got a V8 sound mod too. A really good one at that. Loads better than the one uh, that I tried out on F1 23 last, last year's game. This one really does sound very similar to a screeching V8. Obviously, the revs are still that of the base car. So you, you'd be over revving the car to really get that V8 whine. So in reality, you're going to be cutting the revs short, but it still sounds fantastic. Oh, music. Music to the ears. Delight to the eyes with all these old liveries. I think now is a good time to get into a race. Let's run you through the driver grid order for today's exciting race. Lando Norris put in a fantastic lap yesterday and he'll start from pole position and a very happy Carlos Sainz will start second.
Looking down the rest of the grid, we have Oscar Piastri, Perez, Leclerc, Russell, Fernando Alonso, Hamilton, Ricardo, Sonoda, Gasly, Ocon, Stroll, Magnussen, Albon, Hulkenberg, Bottas, Joe, Sargent, and Max Verstappen completes the grid. Now it's almost time for lights out, so let's go down to the track. And alongside me here today in the commentary box, Anthony Davidson. I know what we've got to do before the start of today's race, but what about our driver? What do the final hours look like for them? Well, for them, you know, you've got your pre-race rituals that you go through. You see different drivers uh, that, you know, some have got their headphones on, they're listening to the music. Some drivers really absorb the energy from the crowd and they're there waving to them. Other drivers, they go within themselves. They chat to their engineers, absorbing that information, that vital information that you need to carry you through the race. And, you know, those pre-race rituals are essential to making things systematic. We do a lot of Grand Prix in a season, and the more systematic you can be, the easier you are within that environment. It is still so surreal to me to see in those cutscenes like the 2012 liveries. It, it really feels like we've gone back to 2012, you know, minus the car shapes, yes, and the driver lineups. It, the, the vibe is there. You'll notice the team wear is also changed. So not only does this mod have driver overalls changed, car liveries, it's got team personnel, it's got pit box, the pit pit, uh, pit pit lane people, everything that you could possibly bleep, anything that could be possibly reskinned to the 2012 version has been done for each of these 10 teams. It's, uh, yeah, really in depth. But it's now time for a last question mark here at Silverstone, driving in the old school Red Bull, lights out, and away we go. There is no performance mod on this, so this should be pretty straightforward from here on out, but the spectacle of it is mad. I mean, it's a Marussia and a Sauber ahead of me. <laughs> Oh, the Lotus pinching me out. Ocon there, getting the elbows. Albono doing very well on the left. A little bit of argy-bargy going on behind as we get ahead of the Sauber of Joe Guan Yu. You can see on the heads-up display, all the icons have also been updated there. You can see the Lotus badge very prominent in yellow as we are three abreast. Actually, some decent racing going on here into the field between ourselves, the Williams, and the Lotus, but yeah, it's uh, yeah, it simple little things like this when it comes to these kind of mods. The heads up display, every part, like the livery, all the, all the little details, the personnel changes, it all immerses you so much. Like, this really does feel like we've stepped back in, like I said at the very start of the video, time warped into 2012. Is there's a big train going on? That's how you know it's actually F124 underneath the hood, is where. Maybe overusing the battery a little bit, trying to make some overtakes, get into the top 10 maybe as Hamilton struggles in his uh, more basic looking silver arrow right now. Sonoda v Gasly, two friends IRL, Torosso v Lotus though, a pairing that we haven't seen for a while from both these teams. Very different identities, complete different team name changes for both these outfits, but just look how much better that Toro Rosso looks up the road. I mean, even the Lotus here, black and gold, lovely, but that Toro Rosso, man, look at it. It's gorgeous. You can just admire it as a, as a, you know, it might be a competitor, but I'll admire the car. Right, let's try and see if you can get Sonoda and Ricardo. Yeah, yeah, I know, Mark. Thank you, Mark. Thank you for useless information as usual as we dive down the inside. Oh, side by side with the Toro Rosso. Oh, he's giving me a good fight, you know. Go on, get the power down. We are in the Red Bull circa 2012, so we should be pretty good. But obviously, it went down all the way to the final race with Fernando Alonso in that dog of a Ferrari. Got DRS of Ricardo. Good stuff. The uh, rev, the rev sound is putting me off a little bit. I'm probably not changing up as quick as I should because I'm just kind of. It's almost like ear memory. You you know to try and rev it out because it's an F1, uh, a V8 sound but obviously the rev limiter is still a V6 engine underneath as we get around the outside of Ricardo so we're probably leaving a little bit of performance on the table to be honest but I don't mind I'd rather leave some performance on the table and actually hear the engine whine a little bit because unfortunately when we get to eighth gear there ain't no whining there's another train forming ahead of us as we go through 
Maggots and Beckett. Leclerc on the tail end of it. I don't get a DRS there. One tenth out. One tenth out. But it's purple middle sector. Really overused the battery though. We're down to single digits. So that's not going to be great. But they're definitely getting held up a little bit in this pack. But the McLarens have walked away, it seems, with one of the Ferraris in the top three. Thank God that didn't give me a bump like it did in career mode. I've actually got PTSD now from every sausage curb because of that jump scare in, uh, in 24 career. As we set a purple, and now we're officially part of this train, so I feel confident that we're going to be able to overtake all of them by the end of the race, even though there's only two laps, though, so got to really get a move on here. But Perez is doing me a solid holding them all up as we catch up to... To be honest, now looking at it, you don't realise the Ferrari's actually got a lot more complicated in terms of its design, like sponsors on the side pods and just maybe being a bit more out there than just a red car. You know, the yellow lines this year, they've tried different things out in previous years, whereas this is a very basic looking Ferrari as you look at it, you know, the old school logo, which is some weird sort of triangle geometric shape or whatever. Really get the nose turned in. Come on, come on, come on. Not really gaining here. Slipstream's not really doing me any help here. Can we go on the outside of the Ferrari? Oh, oh. Very close with Leclerc. That could have been nasty. And, uh, oh, you love to see that AI acceleration coming in. Love that. Okay, Perez is really slow here. And so we can definitely send this on Russell. Big lock up ahead is the top three fight. But we've got Russell in the other Silver Arrow. As we look back, though, <laughs> little glimpse and uh, reminiscent of Schumacher in there with that helmet colour. As we gain now on this is a weird combo. Fernando Alonso in the Force India. This is the weirdest one of them all from this mod. It's actually com it's really funny to me. Like I said before, that Ricardo is actually matched up with his season, with the 2012 season. Whereas uh, obviously, well, Lewis, I know he, he was in McLaren at the time, but he's still in the like you know white overall sort of vibe. Alonso's the big standout, like completely different from red to white, orange, and green. As Perez is really holding him up, I feel like we can get both of them still by the end of the lap. You have to be careful about battery, though. We need enough to get Perez, but try. let's try and get Alonso if we can. Let me get Alonso. Going to have to wait. Try and chuck it in. Get that DRS going. I'm watching the rev lights to make sure I change up in time. Perez is slow. Here we go. Going for the double pass on Alonso and Checo Perez. Thank you very much. It'll be a top four here today in the 2012 24 season as it's going to be Carlos Sainz. It's a Spaniard in a Ferrari. Go figure. That wins the British Grand Prix. It's not Fernando Alonso though. It's Carlos Sainz ahead of the two Vodafone McLaren Mercedes. That's quite, that's, you know what? That's jokes. That's really fitting. A Spaniard in a Ferrari wins, but it's not Fernando Alonso. Very cool. Very, very cool. So that is going to be it for today's video, guys. If you have enjoyed it, then be sure to hit the like button. Like I said, if you want to check out the 2012 mod for yourself, check it out in the description below. As you can clearly see, I loved it. It was an awesome mod. Genuinely, should we come back to this mod? Should we be, you know, trying to explore a bit more gameplay with this in a series of some kind? I don't know, because I really enjoyed it. It's really well made. So let me know. If you're new around here, do get subscribed for weekly Formula 1 content. I'll see you guys next time. Goodbye.